I thought this would be appropriate to read because uh, I just found out my son was not being honest with me about doing his homework and some of his grades. So I, I um, went online and saw his interim report card and saw that some of his grades weren't what he had been telling me. So I went to the school, I confronted him at school, he goes to school with Gonzaga. And um, well, I went to the same school. And so you know, he admitted to me that he, he was lying to me and so he was in trouble. You know, I have to get on him about his homework and make sure he's doing it. So the story I'm going to read is when I was on my way to the ninth grade, right before I was about to go to Gonzaga. So this is the story. And I'm, you'll see my designs. So my attending Gonzaga was a big deal for my mom. Before I started as a freshman, she handed me $75 to purchase some new clothes. This was more money than she had ever given me. Enough to buy a few different outfits. Gonzaga had a dress code. Our pants had to be blue in either khakis, corduroys, or slacks. And our shirts had to be white and have collars. No jeans, sweats, or tennis shoes. Downtown was the place for shopping. Woodward and Lothrop and Hex department stores were only a short ride away on the Xbox. Of course, those stores are gone now. <laughs> I asked Wayne and Don to go with me. After I had purchased my first two items, Wayne asked us to ride farther uptown to 14th and U Street so he could get some money from his father. From there, we would go back downtown so I could finish my shopping. We caught the bus and got up there fairly quickly. Don and I waited for Wayne as he went to cop $10 from his father. The bustling U Street atmosphere was no different than it had been when I was staying at the Pitts Hotel. Uptown was still the place in the city where street people went to make money. Oftentimes, certain metro buses were just an extension of what was going on Uptown, dudes gambled on the back of the bus on the regular. I never saw any bus driver make any issue of it. I, on our bus ride back downtown, there was a dude dealing three card monster on the floor of the bus. If you're not familiar with it, uh, this was a game played with three cards, two black and one red. The dealer would show them face up, then turn them over and shuffle them around. A person would bet money that they could select the red card after the dealer finished shuffling. There was a woman betting against the dude and she was winning. Then he started coming back and took all her money, at least what she was willing to gamble away. Wayne stepped up and put his $10 down. After the dude finished shuffling the cards, Wayne picked a black card and lost his money. I noticed that the red card over the course of all the shuffling had gotten a slight bend in one of his corners. The dude didn't seem to notice. So I put down a $20 bill as the cards were being shuffled. I kept my eyes on the bank card. The woman who had lost her money tapped me on the shoulder. She had slid over to the seat just behind mine and was leaning over my right shoulder, giving me some pointers. I glanced at her a few times but kept focusing on the card. As soon as the dude finished shuffling, I quickly and confidently reached down and flipped over the bank card. It was black. Everyone sitting in the back of the bus gave a husk gasp. What? How, how is this possible, I thought. I quickly put down my last $20 bill, determined to get back my first 20 but I got the same result as before. My chest was pounding, my breathing was short, I was desperate. All I had was $3. I can, I can work my way back with this. Just, just win a few games, I told myself. Man, let's bet three. I really don't play for small amounts like that, Sean. Come on, man, come on, let's, let's play for three, three, man, three. Give me a chance. Okay. After the dude released, uh, relented with a shrug of his shoulders, he, I eagerly put down my $3. He took that too, adding my last $3 bills to the biggest wad of money I'd ever seen. I was delirious. Everyone on the back of the bus was quiet. The woman got off the bus several stops later, and the dude got off at the very next stop. I watched his every step. After that, a man who had been watching the whole thing broke it down for me. He explained that the woman and the dude were a team. The big card was kind of a faint move to bait me into betting my money. The woman's job was to distract me so the dude could swiftly unbend the red card and bend the black one without me noticing. A sleight of hand, man, I felt so stupid. With no money to finish shopping, we caught the X bus back to Little Vietnam, this neighborhood I grew up in, in DC. Wayne and Don laughed during the entire bus ride. Wayne kept mocking me, man, three, man, three. I just sat there in silence and pain. When we stopped, uh, when we reached our bus stop, Wayne and Don literally fell off the bus laughing. What was I going to tell my mom? 
the walk from there up 19th Street to my house was one of the longest of my life. Mom, I got robbed. You got robbed? Yeah. Before she started asking me for details, I said something else to take her mind away from the last money. Mom, I need a job. To my surprise, two weeks later, my mom told me to go see a woman named Lucille Mahoney. She was the manager at Holly Farm, a fast food restaurant in the Trinidad neighborhood. I tried to speak to Miss Mahoney, but every time I went to see her, she was busy. Finally, on my fourth try, she came out from the back to speak to me. But the first thing she said was, I'm sorry, I really don't have time to talk to you right now. You'll have to come back. All I could think was, what? This is my fourth time down here. I'm tired of this HSHIT. Are you going to hire me or what? I, do? I was frustrated and said, a week later, I started working as a Holly Farms cook. I'm not going to read the rest, but the bottom line is that I never asked for my I never asked my mother for money ever again. And so, even though I lied to her, and me saying I need a job, but just to make her feel better, me losing the forty-three dollars and then telling her a lie led to me actually getting my first real job. And I worked that job and I never stopped working from that day forward. That's one of the lessons I learned. I learned about not gambling too. <laughs> right.